Well, I can tell by the airing that my sunglasses are getting. It is a gloriously sunny day. It's about quarter past ten in the morning and I'm heading up what is the highest point on the Ardnamurkan Peninsula, a hill called Ben Hient. It's 528 meters high, which is obviously quite small in relation to a lot of other th things in Scotland. In fact, it's probably, give or take a few meters, it's the same height as West Lomond, the highest point in Fife, back where I'm from. So it's not huge, certainly. And the climb is starting from the high point, the high point on this road, this hill road, that runs from Strontean all the way to Kilhoan, down the way. And yet it still has this wonderfully rugged appearance, keeping in line with how rugged the other places look in this part of the world, like Mull, Rum, big escarpments, cliffs, rugged place. So just because it's a lowly 528 meters, really doesn't mean it should be underestimated. But that goes without saying for most hills in Scotland, because it's often the small ones that catch you out. This is the fourth full day of my time in Ardnamurkin. And generally speaking, I've been very lucky with the weather, I think. Today is pretty much as good as it gets this time of year. Uh, the views from the top by all accounts, because I look down Loch Sunart, out to Mull, over to Rum, Egg, and the cool in the sky you can see over in the background. The views up here are supposed to be quite astonishing, so I'm delighted to have a nice day. The last few days, yesterday it rained all day, but yesterday I was indoors writing, so that didn't really matter so much. The day before that, I went out to Ardnamurkin Point, where the last blog came from, and after that I went out to Sanna. Went to Port Ewark and then walked around the coast of Sanna, and quite astonishing panorama sitting up on a little knoll looking out across the white sands to the small isles an amazing place sun came out i just dozed on the beach pretty much for an hour that was lovely It was only about six degrees but in the sun in march that's warm now so that was amazing so today to have sunshine again this week is a bonus I'd even consider that the weather I had on Ben Reservoir was actually pretty good when you consider. No, I didn't get the views, but sitting up there in that dead calm was beautiful in itself. Interestingly, today uh, was actually forecast to be a little grotty not so long ago, and tomorrow too was forecast to be rain just a few days ago, and now it looks like it's going to be potentially on an equal with today. And then you take that with the forecast that I was given for Ben Recipol earlier this week, that was going to be nice, but then wasn't. And then the previous week on our clip was going to be nice and it wasn't. It seems that it's that, I say, I said before, it's this West Coast thing where you've just got that unpredictability, it doesn't matter what's forecast. Even when it's high pressure and sunshine, there's always that chance of banks of cloud coming in and spoiling your party uh, but so it just goes to show really that you can't get too despondent about the weather forecast if you if you're going away for a week you look at the forecast on the Friday before you go away and it looks appalling you can get quite downhearted but the forecasts here have changed just you know in a day or two so don't get downhearted if you're getting a bad forecast before you go away for the week on the west coast it'll probably change and getting the first view up to the summit of Ben Hient, which is up there, capped with, I don't know, a trick point maybe. But certainly there's even a little bit of ice or snow up there too. Certainly a lot more craggy than it looks from a lot of angles. So it has the appearance at least of being a hill much bigger than it actually is. 
And yet there's a wonderful path that I'm following. It's very distinct, so it's clearly a popular little hill. As clear as it looks, I'm still half expecting cloud to come barreling in and consuming it in the consuming the summit because that's how the last few walks have gone so just in case that happens this is Loch Sunath quite a long sea loch one of the best places in the country for seeing otters apparently I've had people tell me I posted on Twitter and I asked folk where's good to go what's good to see this area somebody pointed out to me and Camas Nangil down there the Sort of the cleft down there that the road curves around this little headland here, this beach. This area apparently is good for golden eagles on now and then. And along here, Glen Borrowdale, good place for otters, I'm told. And way out over there in the distance, probably about 20 miles away, 10, 10 miles? Oh, I don't know, I can't judge distance, is Ben Recipol, looking wonderfully clear of cloud today. That's the day to have gone up. Why it has such a good view, I suppose, is because where it sits there, Loch Shiel sort of is, heads that way down to the mountains that are over here. Way out over there, is that, is that Roche Ben, is it? I think over by Loch Eilor. And then the line of white on the horizon in the middle of this picture now, and it's looking into, into Neudart and uh, over towards Maleg, which is over there. Looking over to sky, but it's really quite hazy out there, so the view might improve later in the day. But you get a good sense of up here of this peninsula sticking out. Loch Sunart borders it to the south, to the south of Ardnamurkin. And then there's uh, the water out over here on the north side, and the peninsula goes out that way. And you can actually see, way over there, the lighthouse. help laughing but there is quite a wodge of cloud coming in from the west still blue over on sky but way out there which is where the weather's coming from it is looking murky it's like all of a sudden I'm quickening my pace for fear that even though it seems so tantalizingly close given my recent form I wouldn't be surprised if it disappeared in a few minutes. Well, the views are opening up on the other side now. That big bright expanse of water is the sound of Mull, and there is a ferry going across, which goes from Kilhoran to Tomore. Speaking to somebody the other day, it's a vital lifeline the service of Tobemora, you sort of, because you're not actually on Mull here, you kind of think that maybe people go to, I don't know, Strontian or Harakal for their goods. But the nearest sort of thing approaching a supermarket is a co-op, or I think was it a Scott Mid, the same sort of thing, in Tobemora, which is 35 minutes over the sound. So it makes more sense for people at this end of Ardnamurkin to get the ferry over to Tobemore and it does actually go anywhere in Ardnamurkin for their goods. But they were saying to me that it's a pain in winter, there's fewer ferries on the winter timetable. It's, it's kind of, you go over there, there's only is it two, two ferries or three ferries a day. You might be going to do your shopping but you have to sort of stay over there a long time before you can come back again and in the winter maybe the ferries get cancelled by the weather and at which point Ardnamurkin can feel quite cut off, especially this western end. They were saying too that the, the high school for kids of that age is over there too, so people have to get the ferry over. It's, it's funny, isn't it? It's a whole different world from coming from the central belt where you've got everything you could possibly need apart from this. I had more time quite like to go and explore all the way down here 
remote coastline that was not no easy access. As is tends to be the case, I think in Malansky and places like this and Rum. For a lot of people, me certainly, most of the interest is along the coast. I mean, it's just such a stunning, rugged coastline with the cliffs and escarpments, and you never know what you're going to see. Usually good for spotting eagles along the coast as well. But it looks suitably wild down there. So this is the final haul. Final climb up to the summit of Ben Hint. Don't know how long I've been walking, but I haven't been walking long. If you're someone who's well accustomed to hill walking, it's little more than a stroll, really. It's all very well for me to say now, having recovered slightly from an injury, a knee injury. Final few steps. Well, there we go. The top of Ben Hiend, the highest point in Ardnamurchan. Quite a stupendous view, actually, that way. It's just a big white line of mountains, snow capped. Sunat, Sand of Mull, way over there, the biggest thing in the distance. It's Ben Moor on Mull. Ardmore Point, the most northerly point on Mull, just over there. That's Kilhoran down there, where I'm staying. And way beyond there is the lighthouse, which I can still see over there. That road to the lighthouse takes you through, essentially, an old, it's a very famous, it's quite unique in this country, it's a ring of uh, an old magma chamber, it's almost like a caldera of a volcano. Big ring, it's not so apparent from here, but once you get down there, it is like a ring, and when you see it on the map, it is, you can, you can see very much how it looks like the big, big sort of rings of a volcano. It's about four kilometers across, four or five kilometers. It's actually a lot more still up here than it was down there. You can see the whole way come up. You can see this track running all the way along the crest of these. So it's not a big walk by any stretch of the imagination, but the view that it gives you is quite impressive for a small hill. Ben Hiant is volcanic in origin like much of the land is around here and uh, it's funny because I've done blogs from Sky and Mull and this is almost like having another piece of the puzzle to add to those. This is the product of the same geological activity that produced a lot of Sky and Mull 60 million years ago in Greenland, uh, sort of the Americas and Europe, the two continents pulling away from each other and putting a lot of great stresses on the landscape and it's pulling apart and creating fissures and there being lots of volcanic activity. Uh, the activity was centred on Mull, way over on Rum, that way as well, uh, and there was another centre in Ardnamurchan, which is that caldera, that sort of the magma chamber, way over by uh, Achnahar over there. And Ben Hien is a sort of a product of being on the flank of all those things and that's where all these rocks comes from. And of course it's been carved by glaciers since, but it's interesting to sort of come to all these places on these different islands that, and this is one of the reasons they all look so similar, I suppose, is, you know, when you, you come to somewhere like this, it feels very much like the coast of Rum or Mull or Sky, and there is good reason for it because they're sharing this common geological history, this common thing that happened to them 60 million years ago, a period of intense geological activity, volcanic activity. Well, what an amazing place to sit and have your lunch. It's, uh, like I said, it's not high, but it 
when you're this close to the coast, 528 meters gets you pretty expansive views outwards. In this case, over Loch Sunar and out to Mull. Uh, and I've not seen anybody. Again, like pretty much everywhere else I've been, I've not seen anyone. I think the only people I've really seen were the coach load of, I said coach, there's only nine of them, but a little van load of uh, German tourists at the lighthouse. I mean, that's pretty much all I've seen. And I don't know if, I, I, suppose, I suppose that's fairly typical. I know it's, it's a weekday in March, a nice day too. And it's quite, I suppose that's why it's quiet. But if you went sort of over the other side of Loch Linney and you went to some of the honey pots over there, there'd be people there now. They'd be busy. So I think coming out here to Arden Merkin, it does feel like you're a long way from anywhere. Um, it's got that island feel to it, even though it's not. I mean, and it's the same that goes for a lot of these, these sort of geographical areas out here, like Moida and Morven and Ardgau. They do feel far removed from, I was going to say, the mainland. But it is the mainland, if you know what I mean. But it feel, it's got that feel to it. I'd actually not been here before. This is my first time in Ardnamurk, and I've been wanting to come here for a very long time. Because, like I said, at the at the lighthouse, there is that that whole it's the most westerly point thing, and that's a big draw <laughs> for whatever reason. It is undeniably a draw. Um, and I know it's got a reputation now the Merkin for being quite a wild, rugged and beautiful place. You know, and quite rightly so. But I'd never been here because, in the same way that I'd never been to Isla or other places I've been to recently, is because it's this fixation in, in my earlier years of having to climb Monroes or big mountains. And so there aren't any here. This is the highest thing here. Uh, and that's always been, I suppose, one of the reasons why I've not come here for a week, a week's holiday. Which is um, which is stupid, I suppose. The other reason now, the reason I'm here now, is because of because of the knee injury. I obviously can't go to the kinds of places I'd normally go to, Ascent and things like that. Places were over uh, up by Glen Affric, somewhere I really really wanted to go and go up in the big hills, which I can't do. So it's the incentive, I suppose, to come to places that are a bit less mountainous, but no less rugged. I mean, it has to be said, the, the walking. If you went off the paths here, if you went down to these places and coastal walking as with Sky and Mull and Rum and all these kinds of places you're going to have a real tough time trying to actually find your way through some very very rough ground so they're not easy options necessarily but for my knees sake it does mean I'm not going to be going up 900 metre 1000 metre peaks coming somewhere like this everything's a bit more low it's a, a safer option for my knee so I find it quite bizarre for something that's been so frustrating for uh, a year or so now to having this injury I think it is now I can see the it's almost like it's a mixed blessing it's a blessing in disguise uh, that I've, it's actually been something that's given me a kick up the arse to come to places like this and of course going to North Uist the week after next and going to Butte at the weekend places I would normally not ever go to it's certainly not for climbing big hills so it's, I'm, I'm quite thankful if, uh, for that Ardnamurkin has really, really impressed me. I mean, I knew I knew it would anyway, um, but I've been lucky with the weather and it's just been fantastic, I think, because even though I'm only here for a week, you haven't got a, a hope of trying to explore even, you know, a tenth of it. It's, so, it's such a convoluted coastline. It takes such a long time to get anywhere on these single-track roads that, you know, you need weeks and weeks to explore it properly. People, I imagine, live here and don't sort of know half of it. So there's a lot to come back to and I'm already planning my next visit. Amazing place.